I'm Dr. Kristen R. Bromley. This video series, which is part of my online music academy, specifically accompanies Note Reading Book 3 from my Method Book series. Like all my books, this selection is available to purchase through Amazon and Google Play. For help, see the links in the description below. In the videos which are part of this specific course, I progress through the lessons in Note Reading Book 3. With the book, you can work through all the songs and exercises, and in the process come to know the entire fretboard and master the skill of playing written notes all along the neck. Alright, let's get to jamming in this lesson. Hi, I'm Dr. Kristen Bromley. Welcome back. Here we are in Lesson 25 that goes with Note Reading Book 3. The last lesson of this book, if you can believe it. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about transposing the music by an octave. So why does this matter? Well, the guitar is actually a transposing instrument. It's a concert instrument, but it's a transposing instrument. And how is it transposing? Well, if the piano and the guitar were to read the same note, such as the C note shown there on page 209, we would read it like this. And the piano, when they were reading it, it would sound like this. So our note sounds an octave lower. What we read as the C on the staff is actually middle C on the grand staff. So our notes sound an octave lower than they're written compared to concert instruments that are not transposing. So the reason we're transposing is because otherwise we'd have to read with a lot of ledger lines because our range is actually spread across the grand staff and we're just reading one staff so we, we read on the treble clef stave and by transposing that music by an octave most of the range that we read in it stays on the staff and that makes it much easier to read than having to read lots and lots of ledger lines so that's why it's written that way now this doesn't matter when we're reading guitar music because guitar music is written with that in mind but when we're reading music that wasn't specifically written for guitar sometimes the melodies sound too low because it's going to sound an octave lower than it was originally written. So in those cases, it helps to read it up an octave. For example, a lot of jazz tunes are written out on lead sheets, and they're just written in concert key, and then they'll also have ones for instruments that are B-flat instruments, or E-flat instruments, for example, so like the alto or berry saxophone, or E-flat instruments, the trumpet, the tenor saxophone, their B-flat instruments. So you can get things written in a different key for instruments that are in those keys. But for guitar, when we read the treble clef concert uh, lead sheet, if we read it as written, it's going to sound an octave lower than compared to, say, the piano or other instruments that are written in concert pitch that aren't transposing. And so as we're reading them, sometimes the range isn't as good and we need to transpose it up an octave. So we're going to look at how to do that. So there's a it's explained, there's a transposition approach explained on pages 209 and 210. If you take a look at page 210, we've got the notes written out from Mary Had a Little Lamb. Now this is what's kind of cool. With the scale system that we've been using, when we read C in this range, and here it's in the same range, but then when we read it up an octave, it's that same scale form. All those notes are in the same place. And I've got two options to do that. And this is with scale form one. Of course, we could look at it with scale form two as well, and then the five positional forms. But the thing is, is that reading in the different octaves is actually the same, though as we get onto the higher strings, we sometimes have to do some shifting uh, that's different compared to the lower strings. So the notes, just the pitches, are written out here from Mary Had a Little Lamb towards the upper part of page 210. And so we could play this in any of the ranges in the key of C. So if I start with my key of C, my major scale for the key of C with my middle finger on the eighth fret of the sixth string and I start on the E, I can go E, D, C, D, E, 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 D, 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 E, G, G, E, D, C, D, 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 I go that low singing along with it but we've got those pitches just like that and I could do that up an octave and it's the same fingering and the notes are in the same place I'm just playing it an octave higher and 
because this melody actually has a limited range, I could go one octave higher where I have just the, a piece of the C major scale up on the top two strings with my middle finger at the 13th fret of the second string, and I could play Mary Had a Little Lamb there, just knowing where those pitches are. So, when we're transposing by an octave, what's kind of cool is we're reading the same pitches, and in a way it's really not that hard because they're in the same places, sort of. We're using the same scales, just in different, different range. Let's go ahead and try this. I'll do this just a little bit with you. Uh, if we flip back to page 5 in the book, where we were just getting into these C major scale songs and exercises, we could do number 8 up an octave. So as it's written, and this is a single octave scale, so I'm demonstrating this with that, I've got it written where we would read it. It's in that range where my middle finger is on that C at the 8th fret of the 6th string, or I could alternatively do my middle finger on the C that's at the 3rd fret of the 5th string, or I could use like scale form 2 and do my pinky on that 8th fret of the 6th string. So that's where it's written. If I want to take it up an octave, I just use the same scale. So if I was playing it right there in 7th position with my middle finger on that C at the 8th fret, I could alternatively play it in another spot using scale form 1, like up on the 3rd string, where I use my index or middle finger on that C that's on the 3rd string at the 5th fret. And we can play it there, and that's transposing it up by an octave. So let's go ahead and try it. So you got 1, 2, ready, go. And it happens just like that. Um, this is a skill that, like, if we're reading lots of lead sheets or lots of piano music, it's really helpful to develop this skill. And it's really not as hard as it may seem. It's actually pretty intuitive and easy. So, besides playing music that was written as lead sheets or written for piano or whatnot that wasn't necessarily written for guitar in the first place and needing to transpose it so that we put it in the range that it was originally written in, sometimes guitar music will actually be written with 8VA or 8VB. So 8VA means play it an octave higher than it's written and 8VB means play it an octave lower than it's written. 8VB isn't very common, but it can show up. What is common is the 8VA. Some people would prefer to stay out of the ledger line reading, and so they'll just write it on the staff and then say, transpose that up an octave. So you want to get used to it for that. Sometimes you run into that as well. Now, ways to practice this. On page 210, there's some suggestions. One way is you can go through and play all the different songs or any of the different songs throughout the book and transpose them up an octave. Now, having said that, if 
the ones that have stuff that's way up high, of course, we wouldn't transpose those up an octave. But the ones that are sort of in the on the staff range or the ones that are down low, you can easily transpose those up an octave. You could also use the songs and exercises from Note Reading Books 1 and 2 and play them up on the neck, up an octave, higher than they were written. You can also just read other music, work through lead sheets. And if you really want a good challenge on some of these, you can work through different exercises in the book and work on taking them up an octave. A lot of times when we start taking music up an octave, we will start in a certain position where we're comfortable, and then we'll have to shift out of that position. So it also gets, gives us the opportunity to work on shifting. So lots of different uh, ways you can practice that, but especially starting with the melodies in the book is a great place to start. And some of the simpler exercises, like in Lesson 1, like the one that we worked on together, is a great place to start. So you can kind of develop that skill, and as you work on it, you'll find it's actually kind of intuitive and easy because of the way the scale system works that we've been using for the guitar. I hope you're having fun. I hope you've really enjoyed working on note reading. It's something, it's like a huge congratulations that you've gotten this far. It's a huge congratulations that you're working on mastering the neck and reading music. It's a very small percentage of guitarists that uh, take on that very ad advanced skill, this very advanced skill. So congratulations. I hope you're having fun with the guitar. There's lots of other books, lots of other things in the Method Book series if you haven't checked out. Lots of lessons on the Academy. Hope you'll just keep having fun with the guitar, have fun with music, take care, we'll see you again. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For help with other guitar playing skills, check out more of my method books and the numerous lessons available as part of my online Academy here on YouTube. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.